Hey, God bless you. How are you? It is so good uh, to have you watching and being here with me right now. And before you uh, turn the station, let me tell you that I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with preliminaries. I, I don't like it, and I'm mad you don't either. But I do want to tell you that I don't think it's a coincidence or accident that you are here right now with me at this particular moment. Because, um, see, I believe that the word that is about to be shared is for you, is timely, and it's for right now in what's going on both in the world, uh, in this nation, in the region in which you live right now. In God, there are no accidents. In God, there are no happenstances. In God, there are no coincidences. There are only purposeful moments. So it's a purposeful moment that you will be here right now with me. Right before we go to the Word, I want to just direct you to the bottom of the screen to let you know how you can connect with us, but also you can support what we do. We uh, try to be a blessing, not only locally, but globally. Um, thank God for the people around the world that we're able to touch, the messages we're able to share around the world. And it's all because people like you care enough to help us reach and touch others um, through your stewardship toward us and our stewardship of what you trust us with. So not only do we not waste your time, we don't waste your stewardship efforts either. Enjoy the message. I'll be back at the end just to say thank you one more time. And while you're here, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. I love to stay in contact with you. Thank you. Bless you. In the first five verses, now we're going to uh, go uh, to the uh, verse six, seven, and eight. First Samuel chapter number five. And, and Bell, if I can trouble you just to grab this, please. First Samuel chapter number five. And as um, soon as I, I read this, I hand you the Bible and, and, and this. Uh, First Samuel five, starting at verse number six. And um, those who are here with me are standing out of deference to the, words, to, to the word of the Lord. Um, where you are, if you want to stand, that's, that's, that's fine, your prerogative. Um, but uh, we stand out of deference to his word simply because we have a respect for his word, definitely respect for the word of God. First Samuel chapter 5, starting verse 6, it says, The Lord was hard on the people of Ashdod and their neighbors. He caused them to suffer and gave them growths on their skin, reading from the New Century Version. When the people, over seven of Ashdod, saw what was happening, they said, the ark of the God of Israel can't stay with us. God is punishing us and dead on our God. The people of Ashdod called all five Philistine kings together and asked them, what should we do with the ark of the God of Israel? The rulers answered, move the ark of the God of Israel to Gath. So the Philistines moved it. To Gath. God's word is already blessed. Amen. And so are we. I want to speak today, you all, from this thought, handle with care. Yes, yes. Handle Amen. with yes, care. Yes, you may yes. be seated in the presence of right. the Lord God. Handle with care. It is our prayer on this day, you all, that all of us are blessed, uh, that the unchurched, those who may not be connected to a church, those who may not, uh, perhaps you're watching, you've never accepted Christ or you have but you're not worshiping right now my prayer uh, is that as we share for the word of the Lord this morning that you would get to a point and a place in your life where you would want to come to know him come back to him come back into regular fellowship with him as I mentioned a moment ago God put inside of all of us the need for community he put inside of us the, the need and the desire to be connected he's the one I didn't make it up you didn't make it up no one has made this up God's the one in Genesis 2, who said, it is not good that man should be alone. That is what God said. He was not just talking about marriage companionship. He was talking about companionship in general, community in general. It's not good for man to be alone. If God wanted us to be a hermit, he'd have put us here by ourselves. Yes. Do you not know how hard it is for somebody to be a hermit? You got to work real hard to avoid everybody. Yes. You, you got to work hard <laughs> to avoid everyone. So, so God put inside of us the need for a community. And, 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 and so that as we share the word of the Lord, you would want not only to come into fellowship with him, uh, but fellowship with those who worship him, also fellowship with those who have him, those who live for him, those who love him, those who serve him. 
uh, so, so that you would understand how it is uh, that we handle him with care. And I'm not talking about with kids' gloves. He ain't no toy he ain't going to break. Uh, but we have to respect God. That, that's what we're talking about handling. Okay, we have to respect God. We have to have the appropriate, accurate respect that God wants us to have. It is my prayer. And it begins with serving him, begins with knowing him, begins with worshiping him. There is no way I can truly say I respect God. I don't want to spend time with God. Right, right. Wow. Right, I'm going right, to say right. wow that right there. But, yes, but then that saints, Christian, those of us who are born again, baptized believers, those of us who have accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior, no matter where you are in the world watching us right now, no matter what day this is, if you watch us live and live in color today or years from now in the replay of this same sermon, that those who accepted Christ would understand that we, just because we worship him, don't mean we respected him. Yes, sir. Uh, we have to make certain that we respect him, that we honor him, because there are some things, I'm going to show you the text in one second, you all, there's some things that can go wrong in our society when the church, when the people of God don't have the proper respect we need to have for God ourselves. It, it, it throws things off course. It messes up the equilibrium of the world when those who are, are know God, God made us in his image after his likeness. He made the entire world. And when those of us who say we love him and know him don't have the proper respect for him, well, then if we're not doing it, it's already starting off wrong. Yes. And then the world itself, you all, uh, can't follow a model that we're not presenting for Jesus, of Jesus Christ. For them to know him for themselves. A few years ago, I was watching uh, the television program Cops. Some of y'all may remember the show called Cops. Uh, it, it came on, and when I said it, uh, I see Staff Pastor Bell back that night in his head. Uh, and because I think in, 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 in his mind, he can hear the tune of, of, of the song when it comes on. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? I don't know the words to the song. <laughs> but I know the beat anyway. So, you know, but but that, that's, that's cops. That, that, that's cops. But when I said it, you all know what I was talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now, I'm sorry, that tool will be in your head the rest of the day, I know. You go, you can be driving home today, bad boy, bad boy. Yeah, but, but, but here's, the thing, here's, the thing, here's the thing about you all, watch this. Um, on the show, they were in Louisiana, and the police rolled up, the cameras were rolling, they rolled up on a young man, 19 years old, who was dealing drugs. And we know it was 19 because the police pulled up on him. He was a repeat, repeat offender. They knew who he was. They knew what he did professionally in terms of being a street pharmacist, as a drug dealer. When the police pulled up on the curb, the camera's rolling, he swallowed the drugs. The police tackled him and tried to get him to regurgitate, to throw the drugs up. And they kept telling him, come on, we don't want to have to go pump your stomach. Throw the drugs up. You need to vomit the drugs up. And, and, and then they finally tried to appeal to a sense of reason. And they said, this could kill you. Don't you understand? You've ingested these drugs. It could kill you. And this 19-year-old man looked at the police officer and said, what difference does it make? I'm not going to live past 21 anyhow. Uh -huh. yeah. And when the man said that, young man said that you all, it occurred to me, Felicia, uh, that unfortunately, uh, when people have no respect for themselves, no hope for themselves, they don't care about hurting anybody else. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I need to get some lights for that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because when people have no respect for themselves, it's hard for somebody to respect anybody else when they don't respect themselves, right. and it's hard to respect right. themselves if they don't have proper respect for God. Yes, yes. I am not saying, you all, that people, everybody who respects God will respect anybody else, but what I am saying, you all, is that if we're going to respect like we need to respect other people, it starts with understanding and loving and respecting God, because out of that, we can then have healthy relationships with one another. Yes, so, 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 sometimes, you all, and let me say this right now, every relationship has the potential to become dysfunctional. Yes, uh -huh. it, 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 it's not just you and your co-workers that have dysfunctional relationships. It's not just you and your siblings who have dysfunctional relationships. Every relationship has the potential to become dysfunctional. When we're going to take the dis off the functional and make it functional, it starts with God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
God says through John, how can you say you love God whom you've never seen, never. yet you hate your brother? You see, all the time, he said, you're a liar. The truth ain't in you because you can't love God if you can't love other people. But then that means you all, we have to make certain that we know how to deal with God. Because if we're really going to get along and love one another, then it starts with understanding how I need to respect God, how I need to live for God, how I need to serve God, how I need to humble myself before God. Because if we don't do it, you all, as I mentioned a moment ago, we throw everything off. The equilibrium is thrown off, you all, and we get, unfortunately, what we see happening in our world, not just today, but etherically today, in our this season in which we live, a lot of the challenges we have is because people have told God we don't want him involved in his world. Wow. And you can't tell the manufacturer, the creator, not to be involved in what they made and expect it to work like it's supposed to work. Right. I'm going to say that one more time. You can't tell the manufacturer, don't be involved in what they, they have made and then expect it to work like it's supposed to work. Now, I ain't throwing no shade at these back alley mechanics. I thank God if you know how to work on cars. But I'm going to tell you right now, can't nobody really fix a car like the one who made it. Yes, oh, I thought I'd get some help. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank God for knowing how to do some stuff. And I ain't tripping on it. I appreciate it. But sometimes what you say and money on the front end, you got to pay double yeah. the back end because you had somebody who didn't make it working on it. But the but the good news is when the manufacturer works on it, they also provide a warranty. Yeah. They provide a guarantee. And when we let God work on us, he's the one who made us. Yeah. When God works on us, we respect him like we need to respect him. Let him do what he wants to in our lives. That he gives us the guarantee that every time things go off course, I gotta put you back in line. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I know how to put you back in line. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you today in, in, in our text in you all is that eternal vengeance belongs to God. Mm -hmm. Eternal vengeance belongs to God. To God. I started talking about last week and, and I need to pick up uh, from there to help us go forward this week. Uh, but in 1 Samuel chapter number 4, we see where Israel has gone to battle against the Philistines and they lost the battle. Then someone has the bright idea, Adams, to bring in the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the presence of God and the people of Israel go crazy. Because they said, now that we have the Ark of the Covenant with us, which represents the presence of God, there's no way we can lose with the stuff we use. We're going to win this battle right now. They go back out, Joanna, to fight the Philistines, and unfortunately, they lose again. But not only did they lose the battle, this time they lose the Ark of the Covenant. But to ask why did they lose both the battle and the Ark, and the answer comes back, Malisha, perhaps because the heart of the people who were handling the Ark was not right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. They lost the battle and the Ark because they thought simply having the Ark with them would win, but they didn't understand when the heart of the people who handled the ark wasn't right, then the presence of God didn't come with the ark. Just your name, Jesus. Because right. just because they had a form of worship don't mean God was in the house. Yes. And what they thought was, if we simply go through the motions and don't handle him the right way, he's going to be there. And God says, I'm not so thirsty for you to say you worship in me, that you live any kind of way and call yourself worship in me. Because I, watch this, because all day long he got angels who shout holy, holy, holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. the Lord of all the whole earth is filled with his glory. So so he wants us to worship him, but 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 if our heart is not right, we really ain't worshiping him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, well, let me show you in in, in, in uh, uh Judges, you all, with, with, with Samson went through the same thing. Judges, the Bible tells us chapter 16, verse number 20, and I like what it says there. It says, then she said this she is a woman named Delilah. Now, don't miss this. That is she, Delilah, said to Samson, the Philistines are here. He woke up and thought, I'll leave as I did before. I'll shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Yeah. Now, let me set the stage for you with this right here, you all. Uh, because 
uh, uh, the light. Samson was called a Nazarite, a Nazarite, which means there were certain things he was not supposed to do. He was not supposed to be having sex, you all, outside of marriage, and particularly because the Nazarite was dedicated to God, so he was supposed to remain a virgin and unmarried, actually. He was not supposed to take strong drink in. He was not supposed to touch any dead thing. He was not supposed to cut his hair. Sometimes people just think that he lost his strength because his hair got cut. But no, the cutting of the hair was the last of the things he had done. When you read the account of Samson, he had sex with a prostitute. He touched a dead animal. He got drunk. Samson had done all these things. The last of what he did was let Delilah cut his hair. Now, here's the thing about it. She kept asking him, tell me your weakness. He would lie to her, find out how we really don't. You don't tell me you love me, and you need trying to expose my wrongs. Yes, yeah. 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 The word of God says love covers a multitude of sin. It does not mean it covers up the wrong. It means it covers it. It means it does not expose it. It means you all that it says I'm going to help you be who God called you to yes, be. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And, 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 so, and so Samson uh, told her the secret of his strength that the last thing was getting his hair cut and she cut his hair and then she said the Philistines are here and he got up to do what he always had done. But what he didn't know is he didn't have God with him. Because the difference was not him going through the motions. The difference was the presence of the Spirit of God. And I'm trying to help us understand you all. Worship, you all, watch this now. Worship reward is the presence of God. As we worship God and God shows up in our worship, whether we're here in the church setting or wherever you may be watching and worshiping with us right now, he said he is what's called omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time with all of his essence. And when he shows up with his glory, the glory of God is the manifested presence of God. And when God is present, that is the reward for worship. But he says, I come when people have a pure heart. I, 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 I come. See, worship is not just a ritual. Worship is about a relationship. Yes. If we try, Sarisha, to minimize worship to simply being about a ritual, then we're trying to make it more emotional and not spiritual. Wow. And, and, and the problem, you all, when worship is only emotional, Cato, and not spiritual, uh, is that God is not involved in simply an emotional time. He's involved in a spiritual time. Jesus says it like this in John 4, 24, God is a spirit. And they that worship him yeah. must worship him in spirit and truth because he's not just concerned with our emotions. He wants us to be spiritual. When we're only emotional, you all, we run the risk, Bell, of having the passion of God's presence but not the power of God's presence. Wow. And Kimberly Cato was there. I said, tweet that. You're watching Kimberly go put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when we, when we don't feel like we're supposed to do it, we run the risk of simply having the passion of God's presence, but not the power of God's presence. Which means we simply have a good time, but we don't leave changed. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. Say it. How many times? Do we have a good time? And we talk about he was in the place. And thank God he can be in the place. But God is more than being in the place of worship. I really want to be in the people of worship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Because he can be in the place there is never be in the people. Yes, yes. And, and the problem is, that Karen, that when he's only in the place of worship, but not in the people of worship, then people leave the place and act the same way. Yes, sir. When he's only in the place of worship, now the people of worship will walk right out of the place and go back and cuss somebody out. <laughs> when he's only in the place of worship, now the people of worship will leave the place and walk past and ignore people who upset us. Yes. He says, but when I'm in the people of worship, no matter where you are, that's why I thank God for those who join me out here. For the truth of the matter, no matter where you are right now, you can worship him. He says, I'm in the people of worship. And whatever the people are, God can do that as well. I hope that, that word blessed you like it blessed me. It didn't just bless me when I shared it. It blesses me every time I listen or watch. Uh, whatever it is that God is, is saying. I am so humbled, so honored to be able to share his word and then be able to share it with you. It, it, again, 
it humbles me. So thank you again uh, for your time. Thank you again for your support. If you haven't done so, again, please uh, subscribe. Check us out. You can find us at T.A. Clark for Ministries on YouTube. You also uh, can find us uh, through our Facebook and connect with us there at World Deliverance uh, and like us comment on our messages see us live every sunday and then on world deliverance tv um, so if you go to our church facebook page or you go to my page thomas clark uh, you'll see various listings for the times that we are on world deliverance tv or you can go to our website worlddeliverancecc.net again worlddeliverancecc.net i'm just trying to give you all the ways you can connect with us uh, to be able to not only follow us, but again, to consider helping us help other people. If what you receive blessed you, then please help us as we bless somebody else. Thank you. I look forward to sharing the word uh, with you again next time. Bless you. I appreciate you. God bless you.